our friends from GRMC uh, here with uh, your healthcare partners, uh, where patients are partners. And we welcome today, like I uh, pitched you before, Laura Shields. She's a lactation consultant, uh, patient services for maternal child health service. You have a whole program just for maternal child health? Yes. yes. So that encompasses like all of our labor and delivery, our yeah. postpartum. Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, the total care, yes. the whole wraparound effect, which includes helping women learn to breastfeed yes. in some cases or supporting women who've done it before, had that bad taste in their mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And it's like, please, Laura, talk me into this again. <laughs> Tell me why it's good for me again. Yeah, half uh, the time I walk in and they look at me and go, thank God you're here. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It can be a very lonely, helpless situation when it's just you and uh, your sore nipples talking to you. Absolutely. And a crying, frustrated baby. It, it is, you can, you have to internalize so much of it because you just got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Yeah. And so having somebody to support, tell me exactly what, what you do. I sort of laid it out like casually that you are teaching and supporting, but yes. there's a lot to that, right? Um, so I, my background is actually as a labor and delivery nurse. Oh, I um, love that. I wish I could, I wish that would be like the job I would want to take. Yes, who wouldn't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then once my first daughter was born, I had had such a difficult time myself breastfeeding mm. and I'd always been passionate about it, but I wanted to learn more about it and how to help. Um, so I went ahead and got my IBCLC, which is my international board certified lactation consultant. Um, and basically just help moms breastfeed in every capacity I can. So a a normal day for me can be totally different from, you know, one day to the next. Um, I usually go and make rounds on all of my moms who have already delivered. Um, I just kind of ask them how things are going, see if there's anything I can do to help, and then kind of go over some some breastfeeding basics, any help with positioning. If they're having a painful latch, we try and troubleshoot what's happening with that. Um, I teach moms about pumping if they have NICU babies. Um, I actually work with the moms down in the NICU, helping their babies transition from bottle feeding <clears throat> into breastfeeding. Um, but the, the breastfeeding has been like, it's no longer like the trending thing to cool, the trending cool thing to do. Uh, do you find that more maybe younger mothers uh, or first time moms are, are tend to want to breastfeed because it's become so popular? Even as a topic in the United States, as controversial as it has been? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Um, There's always a little bit of difference, you know, from one culture to another. Um, There are really big disparities between ethnic groups. Um, I do think a lot of women are doing at least partial breastfeeding. Um, On island, what I've noticed a lot of times is that... um, moms are doing a lot of mixed feeding. So they're doing, you know, half bottle and mm-hmm. half breast. Um, a lot of times there are extended breastfeeding rates. Like I've had a lot of moms who are like, oh yeah, I breastfed my last kid for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, but almost everyone mix feeds in the beginning. So that's kind of one of my battles that I'm waging here yeah. um, is doing a lot of education with the moms and teaching them about, you know, their first milk, the colostrum, how beneficial that is for their baby, um, that their body knows exactly what to make for their baby. Um, right. And- Temperature, mm-hmm. right? Everything, the compo- everything is is exactly the way it should be. Yeah, and you know, one of the problems with the formula feeding early on is that babies have these little itty bitty marble sized bellies in the first twenty four hours, and so when we give them formula, uh, they tend to overeat, and mm-hmm. so they over distend their little bellies. Their bellies get used to having that great big volume. Um, they do tend to spit up more. They have more upset stomach. Um, and so then when we put them back to the breast, they've, they're frustrated, you know, they're getting these tiny amounts. Mm. And, and because so, it's supply and demand. Yeah. And how, it, uh, that's it, the battle. So it because affects it, their, their supply as well. Yeah. So um, the, in, in other words, if a mother does not continue to supply the milk, uh, then, and, I mean, if there's no demand for it and the mother is uh, holding off on the supply, then the child will be frustrated by the time they actually get to her. If yeah. they've been, you know, sucking on a bottle. Because it's so of fast the formula. and so easy. It's, yeah, fast and easy. And because part of the way that their milk comes in initially mm. is by that demand, right? Sure. So it's not only like once the milk is in, but that's how the breast is stimulated to start producing. So between that and the hormone shift at delivery, milk comes in. Yeah. Right? So even if a baby 
wants to eat all the time, that's normal that's right? fine. and yeah. encouraged. So it doesn't mean they're not getting enough. It doesn't mean moms aren't producing enough necessarily. Um, it just means that they're doing their job, right? Because yeah. babies are the best breast pump we make. Yeah, um, it, it, exactly. And it's the, it, I mean, there, there is a, there is a balance. I don't know if it's a delicate balance, but there is a, you know, a balance that um, really is dependent on the mother's frame of mind and state of mind. Absolutely. So, so I know that at GRMC you have these support classes where women can learn about what might be happening in their lives that will affect just that one thing of supplying milk. So we just started in December a free breastfeeding support group. That's every single Monday from 12 to 1, um, and that's on the second floor in the NICU conference room. It's open to all moms community-wide, so they can be moms delivering at any hospital at Sagua. Um, they're more than welcome to come. And the idea behind that one is kind of supporting moms once they go home with any issues they're having with their babies. So um, I'm hoping that as that kind of continues to grow, that we get more moms involved and then we get more peer-to-peer support going. So it's not just me helping, but Mm -hmm. them actually supporting and helping one another. Um, Being a new breastfeeding mom can be very isolating. And so by having that peer support, and I'm hoping that makes people continue a little longer as well. Um, And then I also have a breastfeeding breastfeeding class that is also open and free to the public. It's on the third Wednesday night of every month um, from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, they just have to register with patient education. Um, you can call the main line of the hospital at 645-5500 um, and register for that. Um, is it that most women that you come across after when they talk about their plans after birth want to, they plan to, this is the thing that they're, you know, they're, they're going to do? Or is is it? Do you find yourself having to talk them into it? Um, I feel like some people come in and are very dedicated to breastfeeding, and a lot of my moms come in and do a little bit of both. Uh, so much of what I do is, you know, bring my pom poms in and be a cheerleader yeah. for whoever I am working with that day. Um, so much of it is like just get through today. You know, you're doing so great and yeah. giving them that reassurance because at, you know, two o'clock in the morning when you've been up every 30 minutes with a crying, hungry baby, it's very easy to know. lose, to lose interest. Exactly. And, and, and sometimes as, uh, the areola is toughening up, there's a process and that can be very painful. That process sticking with it, you know, yeah. for the first couple of minutes yeah. where it's really painful you know, is beneficial because it's a means to an end eventually. Once you get to that point where you no longer feel that, you're in. Yeah, and you know, it it really, if you have a good deep latch, it should not be painful. It might be a little tender because your nipples aren't used to that. Yeah. Um, But it shouldn't be painful. When it is, it usually means that the baby's not getting a deep enough latch, and those are moms that I go in and I work with pretty extensively. Um because that will, you know, nobody wants to then breastfeed I, then, if then, it's hardly uh, painful. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> there is the, there is those times where, you know, you, there you don't know what's going on. You know what the latch is like. You just know that it's happening. <laughs> You're just like, just let it happen. Yeah. Don't try to yeah. disturb the moment. <laughs> and sometimes if the latch is wrong, it's wrong. But... You know, in the end, it, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna de-latch at this moment because that would be World War Three. Yeah. You know, but but th- there are challenges to go through, and the fact is that there are support classes, and you offer on a daily basis this sort of cheerleading time to go from room <laughs> from room to room to make it happen. Yeah. Is there any kind of outreach though, or is there a plan? Because I think that maybe sometimes it's difficult for women uh, post birth to get up and get dressed and go to a class. Yeah. As opposed to maybe having a hotline or, you know, some sort of specific and uh, patient to uh, to service, you know, relationship. WIC WIC on Island does have a pretty good peer support um, network going. Oh, that's good. um, Breastfeeding peer counselors um, that they do. I think Monday through Friday they have that resource available to WIC moms. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... uh, 
Barb Maffness, she's one of the other IBCSEs. She's like the queen, right? Yeah, yeah. She is the queen she of this amazing. topic. She is amazing. She is absolutely amazing. Um, and she does twice a week. She has a support group. But as far as like going into someone's home. Yeah, um, sort of that on. Thing, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much of a network there is for that yeah. um, on island. And I unfortunately only do about eight hours per week. I have like two, you know, four hour chunks of time and mm. try to make the most of it, you know. But um, So where did you come from? You've been here for nine months you said yes so where'd you come from uh, I was in Norfolk Virginia for about almost six years right before we came here okay and why did you come here is your husband my husband is in the Navy yeah. okay <laughs> and so this is his duty station thank goodness you found a spot to lay your hat yes well this was uh <laughs> it was it was uh fortuitous I I happened to go to the breastfeeding fair that they had in August and uh, Miss Glenda who's my nurse manager she heard me talking to someone else that I was a, a lactation consultant and her ears perked up and she came <laughs> running over I heard you were a lactation oh, consultant nice. so I kind of fell into it and um, I you there know. was a need and you filled it. Yeah. yeah it's, that's it's a, been great. So you'll be here for, well, an unknown amount of time, depending <laughs> on how long he is here, you'll be here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you said something about it being cultural. What is what is the difference in the cultures on an attitude toward breastfeeding? So I see a lot of parallels here that I saw in... Um, in Hispanic culture in particular with mm-hmm. the like no leche not not thinking there's enough milk in the beginning um but yet the breastfeeding continues on so I'm not exactly sure, you know, how, how deep rooted it is. I haven't done a whole lot of research. Sociological into, research yeah, on it. But exactly. there, but, but there is a difference that women you, of the, of like a Hispanic culture, mm-hmm. is it an underfeeding feeling that they're underfeeding their child? Yes. Yeah, so there's a oh, lot yeah. of concern oh, yeah. totally. about, I get about it. the milk not being in. And I'm like, but that's normal. You yeah, know, your yeah, baby's yeah. belly is so tiny. They can't take large right. volumes. That's why you only produce a little in the beginning. And, yeah. Um, just kind of getting that message out. And then you also get, you know, other family members, uh, dads, grandmas, mm. uh, that want to help feed the baby or that are sitting there going, Oh, that baby's not getting enough milk. And here, give them there's a, a lot of pressure. There's a lot, there's Absolutely. a lot of exterior pressure from yeah. family members, right? In that way. Yeah. That's, that's a really interesting thing. I mean, that's a thing around yes. here. Yeah. And, and I think that these early habits also lend to a child's you know, healthy eating habits in the end, because we do sometimes tend to overfeed our children because oh, we don't, but, but the point is that breast milk, when you're nursing your child, your child is going to get as much as he needs. And then he stops. I like, period. I like to say that they're kind of like leeches. They latch on, yeah. they take what they want and then, and then they, they fall they off away. and yeah. fall asleep. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it, exactly. <laughs> so you don't have any, you know, half empty bottles laying around or, you know, that's sort of the, the, you know, the chances of you contaminating something because you've taken a, you know, a, a half eaten bottle and put it in a refrigerator and took and it out and microwave it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, but pumping is also another, another thing. Absolutely. I mean, you can, you can take the milk and you can store it. You can pump at work there. I mean, there are a lot of support mechanisms that the, the country has offered us. The government has offered women Absolutely. in that area too. Yeah. So, and, and part of that too feeds into if you aren't comfortable breastfeeding or if you're having problems with latch, you can always pump and give breast milk to your baby. I mean, mm-hmm. The most important part is that they're getting the breast milk. Um, And that when you return to work, you still have an option. You know, I get a lot of moms who will tell me too, oh, I'm not going to breastfeed. I have to go back to work in six weeks. I'm like, well, you have those six weeks to breastfeed then. And, you know, let's get you a pump for when you go back to work. Um, And a lot of insurance companies even offer breast pump coverage. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that's good to know. Why, thank you very much. Uh, It was one of the most pleasurable things that I had ever done as a mother was the experience of having done that, right? Cindy, you feel the same way. Uh, And, you know, every child has a different story. We just had this conversation with my grown children now uh, in their 20s and 30s talking about their experiences with watching each other be you know breastfed by me my son unfortunately was 17 months but that was last son separation anxiety on my part (laughs) but it was what he was and he's a grown man now so it's fine i really appreciate having met you laura thank you so much for coming by thanks for having me on well good luck to you and i hope that you can change some minds for you know a (laughs) better healthy eating body i appreciate your time and thank you so much cindy for the hookup that's the way we do it your health care partner is brought to you by grmc where patients are partners.